Hello, Lasermatic family. My name is Dimitri, and today we are going to show you how to import your device onto Lightburn. But before we do that, we need to do some other steps in order to ensure that everything is on your computer, basically from the thumb drive. So you'll probably receive a thumb drive like this, whether it marks MK1, MK2, or MK2XW. And when you plug in your thumb drive, basically we need to import it into your computer under a file and then start up with Lightburn. So just follow me on the transaction right now. So here we are, we're gonna go into File Explorer. And this is where our USB is plugged in over here. So first things first, Go into desktop. You can make a folder, a main folder in desktop or in documents, one or the other, it's up to you. So I'm gonna make it in my desktop. I'm gonna call it Lasermatic in caps. Okay, and then click on enter. Well, same thing also for Mac users. You can do the same thing, plug in your USB basically, go to your desktop, make a new folder, and we call it Lasermatic. And now I wanna go inside Lasermatic, Make another new folder, we we'll call it camera. And click on enter or return. And we'll make another new folder. And this one is pretty important. We'll call it prefs. Short for preferences. Enter or return. So now we're gonna hover over our drive. We're gonna right click on the drive and we're gonna copy. And then right click and paste in the Lasermatic folder. So there we are, Rolly Setup. So now what we do, we're going to Rolly Setup. Now, don't mind me, I have, this is my master USB. So if you have the XW, obviously you're gonna double click on the XW, MK2, or the MK101 or 102 or 101. So I have the XW, so I'll double click on the XW. And here are all the things that I need for my XW or for the MK2 or for the MK1. So I want to right click over factory lens and I want to cut, go back one time into the Rolly setup, Lasermatic folder, and then click in camera, right click and paste. So I have my factory lens in my camera folder. All right. So go back one more time, click on Rolly Setup. Since we're doing the XW, double click in Rolly Setup XW. And we're gonna right click over Materials Library, cut, go back into Lasermatic folder, right click and paste. So we should have at least four subfolders in the Lasermatic folder which is in, on your desktop. So that's that for that. So we're gonna go ahead and close this window. Boot up Lightburn. Now I already have my lasers already installed. So if this is the first time you're using Lightburn, you will obviously get a window like this that will pop up and the whole sheet will be blank. So what you would need to do is import go into your desktop, Lasermatic, go into Rolly Setup. So I'm implementing the MK2XW, okay? And you would have this file over here. It's called Rolly Lasermatic MK2XW LB Dev. Now, if you have the MK2, it'd be Rolly Lasermatic MK2 LB Dev. Or if it's the MK1 LM101, Rolly Lasermatic, MK1, either 101 or 102 version, LB Dev. Okay, so we double click on this, and which I'm not going to do so because I already have it implemented. So we double click on this, and all of a sudden we have it right here. Okay, now if you happen to have Lightburn that was already installed and you didn't receive your laser, you would obviously have a Gerbil. So uh, a uh, unknown 
laser basically it would have wouldn't have a name so you would want to remove that first and you would highlight it for example highlight that one that you were practicing with and you would remove then click on ok and then you would shut down lightburn so this would erase all memory of any laser inside after you remove in lightburn so we're going to boot up lightburn again so we just implemented the xw example and i'll turn on my machine now you see i have com1 written over here because i'm using a powered usb hub which is highly recommended for windows and mac as well uh, they come in very handy and they give you a lot more ports to play with so and less communication errors so my com for my xw is on seven so i'm going to highlight seven that's what i have right now in my laser now if i turn on my mk2 for example and i select my m12 mk2 you'll see it's going to change to com4 so you might get COM3, COM4, COM5, COM6, depending on what COMs have already been virtually used by your computer. Okay, so we'll go back to the XW and see it changed to COM7 again. So we'll turn that down, turn off my machine. So we have a library that we want to implement now. So the library, initially, you will see it here in this area here. Now, in order to get these pages, obviously you have to go into window and arrange all the docs windows you want to have in Lightburn, okay? So over here in our library, to load our library, we will click on load and we will go into our desktop, Lasermatic, materials settings library, or it would be LAHG materials library. Double click on that. And since I have the 30 watt, I will select the 30. If you have the 20, you double click on the 20. If you have the 10, you double click on the 10. There are three different modules. So I have the 30, so I'm gonna double click on the 30. And voila, I have my library in here. Okay, now what you really wanna do also, once, once you load your library, is you wanna click on save as come back to the same one you selected double click on that one as well and it's going to ask you it already exists and you're going to say yes i want to replace it what this does because we have gremlins from time to time in lightburn what this does is it initiates its path so lightburn always knows where its des designated folder for the library has to go to and read from or whatever editing you may do in your library or create a new layer this will always be in that folder where materials library is now to load the art library same process you click on load and i have it somewhere else basically in lightburn okay and here's my artwork library so i would double click there and select all all right and this is courtesy of uh, Rich, Louisiana hobby guy. All right, which you can get on his on his uh, on his web page. And I would open everything. Now I'm not going to do that because I already have it loaded with some other things as well. And it would take a couple of minutes, and it would obviously load all these graphics that Rich was very nice to give away for free as well. And that's basically it for your art library. So I have my system set up this way because I'm using a very large monitor. You would probably not have your art library and library on this side. It would be probably on the bottom right. Okay. So now remember that I said that prefs for preferences would become very handy. Once you set up your window the way you want it in Lightburn, it's very simple. You go to File preferences export preferences and we go to desktop lasermatic and here we are preferences so double click and prefs and now we are going to type 
Pref 1. You can call it whatever you want. You can give it your name if you wish. It doesn't matter as long as you remember that it is your actual first preference. And then we click on Save. So if ever this window in Lightburn changes, for example, like this doesn't want to go back into place, this has moved down here, this has moved over there, and you can't seem to get them back or you've lost your windows. Well, there's a simple way of retrieving everything. But by the way, little shortcut, if you double click on the tab in this area of the window, the library will go back into its place. Same thing with over here, laser. It'll go back into its place. Same thing with over here, the camera. See, the camera's no longer here on the bottom tabs. If I double click in here, it moves back into place. So these are little shortcuts. So basically, if this window or you're losing windows, instead of going into window, reset to default and re going through the whole adaptation of how you had it before, all you got to do is go to File, Preferences, Import Preferences. You may not import preferences with any active project. Oh, that's interesting. I don't have any active projects. Hmm, okay. So, Preference, Import, and it's giving me that again. That's very interesting. So, basically, you get the gist. I don't know why that happened. Usually, this works flawlessly. And that's about it. So, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, tips and tricks for device import.